Well, let's see what Gary's... Oh, there's a smattering of applause there. <laughs> That's quite dramatic in this kind of atmosphere. <laughs> yes. Calling it like it is, you just get up there, you play your game, and if you lose, you go home. That, that starts for you, isn't it? But Gary, now the overwhelming favourite to win this tournament. He's been drawn against David Pallett. What about his performance, though, against Rob Cross? Well, a bit of him in the match, but it, early on, he just kept managing to hold on to the best of his ability, as we know, as a world champion, and Gary stepped all over it. Yeah, what a great story, David Pallett getting to the last four, isn't it? We talked about him a little bit earlier about how he hadn't got his tour card this year. I mean, he competed for it, just didn't get one. Such is the competition in the world of darts now. So many good players out there, but fantastic for him to reach this stage, 28 years old. And this tournament has a history of doing ugly. And I mean, Gary, I mean, still averaged 98, which is still fabulous. But from 5-4 down to, to win six on the spin against... Rob Cross was, was impressive, as was Pallet and, and Robert Owen. Yeah, what about Robert Owen? Fantastic yeah. for him to get to this stage as well. Well, he's taken his opportunities, 9-3 up, uh, and it was a great performance. Impressive to see John Park get this far as well, winning five matches uh, in a row in the last couple of days to get to this stage. Just perhaps ran out of steam in the end. Yeah, post you need. I mean, I think from any dark player's point of view, when you get something like that, when you've been in the doldrums for such a long time, Absolutely. Well, let's have a look back at one of the matches earlier, a quarter-final between Corey Cadby and Gerwin Price. Let's see how it finished. We join the action at 4-3 to Cadby. The force is with him at the moment, isn't it? Never mind being in the last four. He is a player that we picked out at the start of the tournament as having potential to actually win this. Well, yeah, because... A mature performance. He's only 22, isn't he? But it, the way he's spoken to us in the last couple of days about not wanting to be that kind of pantomime villain that we've sort of seen on the stage giving it everything because he's been using up too much energy doing that, not focusing on his darts. But it is mature of him to recognise that so young. Yeah, he is maturing fast. and different Without a crowd here, very different to Glasgow when we had all the histrionics. But it was a different kind of reaction that we saw. Who we know does it quite often. He only did it on a couple of occasions, almost. Tied to it, of course. After that match, we keep referring to it, but it was at such an unusual match in Glasgow when they were mm. both really courting the crowd, getting each other's faces. After that, there's quite a reaction on social media. And I just wonder how much energy, psychological energy, that will have taken up with them, seeing all that stuff written about them, responding to some of it, rather than focusing on the darts. Yeah, well, it's, it's dread media. And they, they, you know, they've both come in for the, the, you know, a fair share of, you know, stick. You know, but ultimately... Somebody else who they talk about just darts-wise rather than anything else is Rob Cross. We know about him, <clears> the time, the, the mental headspace that was taken up with the reaction, the media interest after the World Championship. He came into this, said, right, I'm 100% focused again. Now I can, I can just practice as much as I want, and that's great. What have you made of his performances up till today? It's been OK on the... Off in the match, they were toe-to-toe, -to -toe, weren't they? And then Gary just ran away with it with the last six legs. Yeah. He... And briefly... It looks as though it's going to be, well, Gary Anderson, certainly the favourite, Corey Cadby, another one, but who would you put your money on? You'd have to go for Robert Owen wins it easy. OK, easy peasy. There you go. <laughs> we started off with our very first time. Make sure that you join us at 7 o'clock to find out who it will be, either Gary or Robert, apparently. He didn't quite have the crowd there to milk the scenes, did he? But it's so unusual for us to be standing here at the end of a show. Very, very unusual on a Sunday night. Not to be saying the same things about the same player. So let's not talk about MVG on this occasion. Let's talk about Gary Anderson a little bit more because it is over two years since he won his last major. He's um, been in five finals since, lost four of them to MVG. I know that sounds a strange thing to say, but he, he sometimes comes across with that persona do I really want to win this event? Do I want to go home and have a lie down? He's that kind of character, isn't <laughs> he? Isn't he? But, yeah, he's uh, won, he won five World Series in that. I know they're not yeah. sort of major yeah. ranking events, but... Mm. I want to know what was said, by the way, between uh, Corey Cadby and Gary Anderson just a few minutes ago on the stage. It's all a little bit quiet now, hasn't it? Even quieter. But, um, but do you see him going on to win more major trophies, Gary? Do you see him carry on till he's 50 no and beyond? There's no reason why not, because he's still playing. But, uh, he, he, you know... On an average of 98. 26 180s in the tournament. Well, this time last year, Peter Wright won it, of course, um, with Michael Van Gogh out injured, but then it was Michael who went on to dominate the year, winning trophy after trophy. Do you see him doing that again this year? Do you see the, the trophies being shared around? How do you see it? I think. Okay, well, thank you very much for your company. Nobody else bothered, but really quite special. Well, this UK Open's been full of shocks, but it's finished with a top quality player returning to winning ways. We will see you in May. Bye for now years ago but he deserves his victory nonetheless winning those last three legs in confident style 
Yeah, he bounced back. And his character, he just gets on with it if he loses. Yeah, the, the beauty is, you get knocked out in one, there's one the next week, you know, it's Premier League. Players in darts now, there's a lot of money in darts now, isn't it? I mean, £35,000 for winning a yeah, few we're matches We're not bitter, here. are we? <laughs> no, not a bit. Well, it's a £12 million circuit now also with yeah, the yeah. PDC. You know. yeah, when we, you know, back in our day, if you didn't, you didn't do well in, in one, you had to wait three, four, sometimes five months to, to get another opportunity. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a great time to be a professional dart player. There's also a lot more competition now. There's so many good players. I, mean, I know we've mentioned it a lot of times, but David Pallett didn't manage to win a tour card, and yet he got through to the semi-final here today. There were just so many good players out there now. Yes, and there's going to be a lot more emerging as well. You know, we've got the, the JDC. We've, Next it's level incredible. down, the Challenge Tours. In, oh, I mean, they're posting mad. 100 averages in that. Been a lot more players coming through that maybe the general public haven't heard of, but they're playing wonderful. This event, where well, we love this event so much because, you know... It's a nice combination, isn't it? Because you get young players coming through, but then you get some veterans as well who can have a run. John Park, we're going to say. Yeah, 18-year-old Nathan Rafferty. 18-year-old from Coal Island in Northern <laughs> Ireland. And it seems a long time ago now that he beat Peter Wright in, in yeah. the opening round here, wasn't it? I mean, apart from him, who else, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> would you pick out as being a rising star that perhaps we haven't seen on the main stage yet? Well, there's so many. Very much with Robert Owen. He's another one. He's an emerging... He's just so early in his career, isn't yeah, he? He's got baby. so many big matches still to come. Well, this has been a tournament of shocks, as we've said so many times. But there's no bigger surprise than the world number one, Michael van Gerwen, losing to Geoffrey Dezouan, a 21-year-old from the Netherlands, on Friday evening. Well, here's a reminder of a very rare defeat for MVG. We'll join the action at 6-all. Stuart, 15 